Good morning, ESM. Hey, Uncle Richie here. Happy Friday. Woo! We made it. Another week. Yes. Okay. And on Friday, we do this thing called Fist Pump Fridays. Fist Pump Fridays, baby. Yeah. Okay. With Fist Pump Fridays, we break apart the word pride. And these are kids in the school, and they were nominated by teachers or their friends. These are uh, kids that have shown professionalism, respect, involvement, diversity, and excellence. And we just want to recognize them. You can be recognized too. Just keep up those pride aspects, and maybe your teacher could nominate you. Our first winner is Wes Rogers from Miss Freeman. Woo! Hey. Next, we have Stella Neshi from Mr. Ribsack and Mr. Causer. Woo! Next, we have Juan Maldonado from Mr. Ribsack and Mr. Causer again. Woo! There they are. Where were those fifth pumps? Hey. Next, we got Dan Gilkey from Miss Kakamo. Woo! Hey. And next, we have Savannah Ellinger from Miss Corbett. Woo! All right, that was everybody. Hey, keep up the good work. Richie loves you. Hang in there. Have a great weekend. Hey everybody, uh, I'm Bennett, and in case you didn't know, today is Friday, October 23rd, and we're going to go right into news with me. So on Wednesday, the Director of National Defense, John Ratcliffe, said that, according to new information, both Iran and Russia have obtained voter registration information in what appears to be an effort to interfere with the upcoming presidential election. Ratcliffe said that Iran was responsible for an intimidating email campaign which was made to look like it had come from the, quote, Proud Boys, a far-right organization. Rat Radcliffe also said, quote, we have already seen Iran sending spoof emails designed to intimidate voters, incite social unrest, and damage President Donald Trump. Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer said he believes the purpose of the emails was to, quote, undermine confidence in elections. According to White House spokesman Judd Deere, uh, President Trump has directed the FBI, DOJ, and defense and intelligence agencies to actively monitor and stop any attempts from foreign countries and groups to interfere with the U.S. elections. Last night, the last presidential debate took place between President Donald Trump and former Vice President Joe Biden. This debate seemed to be more civil with less interruptions from both candidates. Trump had made claims that his administration was trying very hard to keep parents and children together on the southern border, claiming most came through cartels and gangs. The statement was false, as court documents filed this week say 545 migrant children still haven't been reunited with their parents as a result of the Trump administration's zero-tolerance family separations policy. Biden made an exaggerated claim about red states in the Midwest having significant spikes in COVID cases. Although many states led by Republican governors have been experiencing surges in the Midwest, blue states like Colorado and Virginia are seeing an increase in cases as well. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Today will be windy with morning clouds giving way to some sun and have a high of 77 and a low of 52. Saturday will be much cooler with a few morning showers and have highs in the low 50s. Sunday will be cool with a mix of sun and clouds and have highs in the 50s. Monday will likely be rainy, reaching a high of 55. Tuesday will be cool with a few showers and have a high of 51. Wednesday will be chilly and have a chance of showers with a high around 50. And Thursday should be mostly cloudy with highs near 50. I'm Nicole with your weather.
So in case you didn't know, on our Twitter, we have a Sweet 16 bracket going on that McSweeney here would like to tell you more about. That's right. So the pandemic, one of the many things that have happened <laughs> over the last several months is we've been inundated with all of these new phrases, yeah. which I'm sure we've all heard, and some of them are getting a little bit long in the tooth at this point. And so yesterday, we, f we featured uh, two of our uh, words mm -hmm. you know, that we're getting tired of. One was the new normal, yep. and the other one was, uh, you're, you're muted again? <laughs> uh, so both, both, you know, kind of up there. Yeah. Uh, however, our listenership has spoken, and uh, the Twitter feed says that the winner of that battle was indeed the new normal. So. Yeah, that's a phrase that I don't really like either. It's sort of like they say it all the time. It's something they love to say. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, you just got to deal with it, I guess. But what's going to be our next poll? So uh, if you look at or if you go to our at ESM morning show, that's where you can vote. But our new poll is the following. Unprecedented times and you want to do the next one? I hope this email finds you well. <sighs> It's a lovely sentiment. Yeah, but it gets old. It does. It does. So go on our uh, Twitter at ESM Morning Show, and which one are you tired of hearing of? Yeah. More on that after sports. In upcoming games, girls varsity tennis will play Auburn at home at four. The boys soccer team beat Skinny Atlas yesterday, six to three. Scores were Christian Moon, Jordan Sanson, Eric Callahan, Evan DeBurgis, and Zach Schufelt. The girls soccer team also came away with a win against Skinny Atlas yesterday, beating them six to zero. Leah Rem had a monster game, scoring all six goals. Last night, the Philadelphia Eagles came back to beat the New York Giants 22 to 21. Carson Wentz led the Eagles on a last-minute drive to secure the win. Carson Wentz threw for 359 yards and had two touchdowns with one interception. Some under-the-radar waiver wire pickups for our fantasy team this week include Panthers quarterback Teddy Bridgewater, Jets running back McCall Perney, and Jaguars wide receiver Cleon Cole. Tonight, Game 3 of the World Series is still on as the Tampa Bay's Tampa Bay Rays put Charlie Morton on the mound to go against Los Angeles Dodger Walker Bluer, who is the opposing mound for the LA Dodgers. The series is tied one to one. I'm Lino with Sports. So personally, I think that I hope this email finds you well will lose, but we'll see how you guys vote. Now that's all we got for you today. So from me, Mr. McSweeney, and everyone here at the morning show, have a great weekend.